I'm a biochemist. I love being a biochemist. And it seems like at this point, a lot of people need a biochemist, whether it's to help teach the MCAT section, the biochemistry section of the MCAT, which is super popular, or the things that's going on in America in terms of obesity, they lean to biochemists to try to understand metabolism. So it's a very cool, hot field right now. I actually received the chemistry award when I was in high school. Didn't know I was that great at it. I got an A in chemistry, and she just felt like I was really good enough to get the award. And so from there, I decided to major in chemistry in college and kind of just went from there. Definitely would have done a summer research experience. So that's one thing that I see a lot of students doing, and students who started the PhD program with me, they did that, but I never did a summer research experience when I was an undergrad, and I think that would have helped me, and I didn't even do one in grad school. Today's lesson is on titration, and there are several objectives we have to cover. The first objective is to be able to identify the purpose of a titration reaction. The main objective of a titration reaction is to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. So how will you determine the concentration of an unknown solution? Okay, so you will need to understand that you need an acid, that you need a base, uh, that will be involved in this process, and so the part of the objective is to be able to explain how the titration reaction works. So you're going to have an unknown solution, but it has to react with something that is known. So an unknown solution plus a known solution will actually allow you to be able to determine the titration reaction. And so what you will use in this case is you will need a strong acid, a strong base, but also, in order for the reaction to be seen in the lab, you actually need to have what's called an indicator. So again, the first objective is to be able to identify the purpose of a titration reaction, and the purpose is to be able to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. The second part of the objective is to be able to explain how a titration reaction works. And the titration reaction works by reacting an unknown solution with a solution where you have a known concentration. And so that will involve you with strong acid, strong base, and an indicator. So the second objective is you should be able to identify key apparatus that, that are used in a titration reaction uh, because the whole point is that you want to be able to see that you actually have made the reaction go to completion. So you would need what's called an early Meyer flask, right? And so the early Meyer flask is what you actually place your unknown solution. So that's what you're trying to determine the concentration of. That solid will go into the early Meyer flask, okay? In addition to placing that into the early Meyer flask, uh, you first, of course, have to measure it out. So you would need a balance to actually uh, measure out the solid before you place it into the early Meyer flask, okay? So that contains the unknown. This is a ring stand, and a ring stand is actually going to attach a burette clamp. So once the burette clamp is attached to the ring stand, you have your burette attached to the burette clamp, and you're going to put the solution that has a known concentration through the burette. So most burettes are measuring at 50 milliliters, so you will fill this burette up to 50 milliliters of a solution that you know the concentration of, okay? So once you have your solid that you measured out on the balance and put into the early Meyer glass, you actually, of course, have to mix it because it needs to be a solution. So you'll use a graduated cylinder. You'll measure out a certain amount of distilled water into the graduated cylinder and mix it in the early Meyer flask that contains the solid. And this early Meyer flask will actually sit, sit underneath uh, by the ring fan so that when the burette volume is coming down into it, it will actually start to mix and you'll see the reaction going to complete. 
All right, so again, identifying the key apparatus, you need to know an early Maya flask, a ring stand, a burette, clamp, a burette, a use of an analytical balance, and a graduated filling. The third objective actually ties into the second objective, and that is simply being able to know uh, the actual terms of what you are using. So I mentioned that you're going to measure out a solid that's going to go into the Erlenmeyer flask. That solid is what we're going to analyze, right? So that's what we're going to determine. And so that is actually called an analyte, okay? So what will be in here is called an analyte. So you're analyzing it. What will be in the burette is what we already know the concentration of. And so we actually call that the titrate. So this is what you are titrating the reaction with. All right, it will be in the blue clamp. The entire reaction, again, involves a strong acid, such as uh, hydrochloric acid, and a strong base, such as sodium hydroxide, right? And so when you mix these two together, you end up making something called a neutralization reaction, meaning you have neutralized it, resulting in sodium chloride, and of course, water. All right. So neutralization is another term that you will hear often. Okay. So when we think of this, if we were imagining um, this entire reaction going through, we could say that sodium hydroxide in this case will be the titrant. So that means that is what is in the burette, and the hydrochloric acid will be the analyte because that's what perhaps you prepared in the early Meyer flask. Together, they give you sodium chloride and water, making what's called a neutralization reaction. So once all of this takes place, and you have it all assembled together, right, let's put the Erlenmeyer flask here. You're going to see something that's going to go to completion. How will you know it went to completion? Because, remember, you put something in here called an indicator. The typical indicator we use is phenothalene, so you add a couple of drops of that in there, and when it goes to completion, it actually will turn faint pink, okay? So the indicator will make it be a faint pink color. And we say it has reached what's called the end point. The end point is something you can actually visualize, so you can see that the faint pink color has happened. Another term that you will often hear is called an equivalent. All right, and so I don't want you to confuse the two, even though they are similar because they will happen at the end of the reaction, but an end point you can visualize. An equivalent point you cannot. It is more abstract, whereas like the number of equivalents of base mixed with the number of equivalents of acid. Okay? So again, the objective is to understand the key terms, and the key terms are your analyte, your titrant, neutralization, end point, equivalent point, and understand the whole process is a titration.